I've had far too much fun lately creating these awesome birthday cards with beautiful little bunting layers on them. And I want to show you exactly how I did it. My name is Kelly Rousseau and let's get clacking. So in Cricut Design Space on a new canvas, click on images. We're then going to search for bunting. And if you don't have Cricut access, I will leave a link in the description for a file that you will be able to use. Now this is the file that I've used for my cards, but if a different one tickles your fancy, by all means, go for it. And click add to canvas once you've selected it. Now we're going to reduce the size a little bit to be able to fit on our cards. And now we're going to use the offset feature in order to create the layered effect that we can see. So I'm going to click on offset and reduce the number quite a bit. And of course, this is totally up to you how much color you want peeking out or not. I like to have quite a bit of color peeking out, so I'm going to leave it at around 0.3-ish. And I prefer having the curved corner look, but if you want to go for the sharp corner look, then you can totally do that as well. And once I'm happy with how it looks, I'm going to click apply. Now I am going to change that color to something else. And I'm going to change the color of the bunting itself to white. As I like to visualize what my card is going to look like once it's done. Now I'm going to select the bunting again and again use the offset to get the inside of the bunting. So I'm going to take this little dot and I'm going to drag it to the left of the line so that we can see those little triangles forming on the inside of the bunting. And I'm then going to click apply once I'm happy with how big those are. Now we have a few different layers to work with. The offset of the bunting and the little triangles, I like to have those cut out of the same color but multiple different times. So I'm going to hover the mouse over the corner and just rotate it 180 degrees so that I can nest that one inside the little spaces of the bunting. This really helps to maximize the use of your cardstock and you don't waste anything. So I'm going to select those two and attach them so that they don't move and they stay exactly in that location. Now I want to duplicate it to have as many buntings as I want on the card. But I want to have four different buntings, so I'm going to right click and duplicate and then rotate this one so that it nests inside the negative spaces of the bunting. Select both of those, right click and duplicate so that we have four of them. Then going to select them both and try and optimize the space once again. Once I'm happy with that space, I'm going to right click and attach all of those together so that it takes up the least amount of space possible. I'm then also going to duplicate this one, but I'm going to change the color for each of the layers so that we can cut these out of different colored cardstocks. So your canvas should look something like this now. And please make sure to save your project before going onto the cutting stage. I'm going to change my machine selection so that it reflects the machine that I'm going to be using and I'm going to click make it. If you're wanting to save a little bit of time and not have to cut each color on each mat individually, you can select one of the objects on the mat, click the three dots in the top left hand corner, select move object and move it to another mat. And I'm going to do that for all four of these. I'm going to move them all to the same mat. And you can also just avoid this by making them all the same color. I'm going to move them to each corner of the mat. And when I'm setting up this mat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out little sections of the foil craft board that I'm going to be using and placing them in each of the corners of the mat. So that when this cuts, it will cut the same design out of all four corners and each of the colors all at once. So I don't have to load the mat, unload the mat, load the mat, unload the mat, etc. So this makes your project go a lot faster. And once you've set up your mat on the Cricut Design Space side, I'm going to click continue, connect to the machine, select your material that we're going to be cutting. And in this case, it will be the foil craft board. I don't have the setting for the non-holographic one. From my tests, the holographic one cuts the foil craft board perfectly. So I'm going to just leave it at that. And I'm then going to load up my mat. I 
I realized that my pieces were a little bit longer than I had initially hoped. So I just rotated the designs a little bit to be able to fit onto the mat. I'm going to use a nice sticky green mat and my brayer to make sure that each of the sections get stuck down very well. Now that we have everything cut, I'm going to just pop these out of the craft board as maybe they didn't quite separate while they were cutting, which is totally okay, and put them into little piles of each color. The next step is to take the white section of the bunting. I like to use my reverse tweezers here because I can hold the piece of bunting without having to continue to press on these tweezers, although they do confuse my brain a little bit sometimes. And to apply glue onto the back of the bunting. I then line it up on the foil layer, press it down and release the bunting. And because it's liquid glue, you can actually move the bunting around a little bit until you have it in exactly the right spot that you want it. And then you do exactly the same for all four of them. And the light is totally catching me at an odd angle here. But if you are enjoying this content so far, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me know what kind of content you like and what to do more of in the future. And it helps to spread to more people. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So to put these little triangles onto the bunting, I actually like to use a pick-me-up tool. Now this is the Silhouette pick-me-up tool, but I will leave a link to this one or any other similar one in the description. But I like to stick with a color pattern so that I know that I have the right number of colors for the right number of bunting. So I'm going to start with the green one. Add a dot or so of glue to the back and then place it down. And then I just continue on that exact pattern for all of the rest of them. If you want to, you can even add a little dollop of glue onto the table to dip your triangles into. Once all of your bunting pieces are finished, you can start rounding off your card. And to finish off this card, I used foam tape in order to give the bunting a little bit of dimension. And because the tape was too wide, I actually cut the tape strips in half so that they would neatly fit on the bunting itself. And I did all of those first. Then when I added the bunting to the card, I didn't want to place them just straight on the card. I wanted it to be at an angle so that it can kind of look like party banners that are hanging in a room from one side to the other side of the room. I found it easier to lay them on the card before pressing them down for some of them just to see where I wanted to place them all. I then cut off any of the bunting pieces that were overlapping the edges just so that it adhered to the shape of the card. Added my super fun sentiment and then my card was completely finished. But if you want to know how I used my Cricut to make this amazing embossed background for my card, and you can use any one of the Cricuts for this tutorial, check out this video on your screen here. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.